So we just saw Iran launch its biggest ever strike, missile strike, against Israel. And what did they achieve? They ended up killing one Palestinian from Gaza that had left and was in the in Jericho area. Let's be clear, what we've seen in the past few weeks has been nothing short of a miracle. And as we're about to approach uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, in just a few hours from now, I just wanted to pause and reflect on what's been going on. We started this year, literally almost 365 days ago, uh, when we had just a few weeks after Rosh Hashanah, the new year began for the pro for this year, we had October 7th. The Middle East, the Jewish world, Israel, was plunged into grief, mourning, and a real sense of anxiety about what's to come. It was Israel's worst atrocity, worst day, most bloody day for civilians in our history. And many people have been, for the last year, extremely concerned and still remain so. But what we've seen in the last few months, the last few weeks in fact, no one could have predicted. Getting Ismail Haniya in Tehran, in Tehran, the prior Iranian attack also being thwarted, and seeing a new coalition build against Iran with other Arab countries that we might not have expected to have occurred, certainly in prior years or decades. And then people were telling us that whenever Israel decides to start fighting against Hezbollah, it's going to be extremely bloody. It's going to be extremely messy. They were saying they've got so many rockets aimed at Israel's door. We just found out that they were planning a similar October 7th style attack, God forbid. And we were told that in order to really get them, it was going to cost a huge amount of civilian lives. On the Lebanon side and, by the way, on the Israeli side, potentially, God forbid. And we have seen Israel, through her ingenuity, through the Pedro and walkie-talkie attacks, the, the ability to degrade Le, uh, Hezbollah, and then to get Nasrallah himself. Again, miraculous. No expert thought this possible. Yes, of course, we have to take our hats off to Mossad and Shin Bet and the IDF, of course. But to think that everything can just, it's, it's straightforward and things can go smoothly. Think about some of the slightly complicated tasks you have to go about in your own daily life. Just one slight thing that can go wrong and things can get messed up. We all know that from daily life. Imagine how many things would have to go right. How much planning, how much ensuring that you don't get caught would have to go into all of this. It is truly astonishing. And what we learn from the story of Purim, where we thousands of years ago faced another genocidal uh, tyrant in Persia, Haman, is that Yes, we absolutely have to put in our efforts to try and thwart the evil decrees, as Esther and Mordechai and the Jews did. But ultimately, we equally had to turn to God in prayer and to Shuva and, and turning back to him and trusting him and knowing that ultimately it is him who will protect us, who will bless the work of our hands. And we're seeing that happening now. What we're seeing happening is not a return to the past, to the 2,000 year painful exile of the Jewish people, where they would be maligned, unable to see how tomorrow could be a day of safety, security or peace, often stateless, homeless. And many people, of course, in the aftermath of October 7th, have been concerned that maybe, who knows? Who knows if there will be an Israel tomorrow? I think what we're, being, what we're seeing 
with these successes that Israel's having. And I am in no way complacent. I am in no way thinking that we should just say, yeah, it's all fine now. No, threats are still serious and need confronting. But what I will say is that we cannot ignore the hand of God guiding and protecting Israel. Thousands of rockets raining on Israel over the years and so few casualties or injuries. And we think, yeah, it's normal. That's just what happens. No, it's not normal. That's not just what happens. Yeah, they took out Hezbollah and managed to totally degrade them. You know, it's great. Well done. But that, that doesn't just happen. No expert thought that possible. We're seeing miracles. This is this is bigger than Entebbe. In some ways, some of Israel's historic wars. I find this to be a level of ingenuity that is that matches that. And so my message is that we should get out of our despair loop. Um, yesterday, when we heard the news of the Iranian rockets being firing, fired down at, at Israel, I was actually um, doing some Rosh Hashanah deliveries at the time uh, for gi giving out certain things to people. And uh, everyone, when I was dropping things off, was glued to their TVs. Glued, and I, by the way, I was as well. I was listening to what's happening and, and praying and all of that. But we have this sense of, at the back of our mind, always ready, preparing for, uh, for, for despair, for, for problems. And I don't, I don't blame us as Jews for having that. But we're seeing that we're in a different phase now of Jewish history. The redemption is coming. It's on its way. And all we have to do is just do our part, which is to unite and to re-engage with and reconnect with who we really are as Jews. And that's what Rosh Hashanah is really meant to be all about. It's meant to be about making us think, okay, we're starting a new year. We're almost back in the, back into the, to the drawing board, back to thinking about who we actually are as individuals, communities, nation, what we wish to be. The Jewish people are God's voice to the world. They partner with him in revealing God to the world through their incredible story and through bringing the Torah, his vision for how he wants the world to be to the world. We're so used to feeling targeted by the world to being shamed and accused and facing all these false accusations. Imagine a world in which actually the world looks to the Jewish people for that kind of prophetic guidance. They look up to them as a voice of, of godliness to the world. That's a world that may seem distant and may seem like a fantasy but it's not far off and, and we are heading there. And one of the other ideas of Rosh Hashanah is that we know that several things happened on, on this day. We know that it's when uh, certain people, great people were born, such as uh, um, Isaac um, and I think even Joseph. And uh, the Talmud that lists many different things that happened on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, the new year for the whole world, actually, is that it says Joseph was freed from prison. It seems like quite a random thing to throw in there. Joseph was freed from prison. Okay. Well, what it's telling us is that this was the culmination of decades of Joseph being expelled by his brothers, attempt, had an attempted assassination from them. Then they sold him into slavery. He was downtrodden. He was in a foreign society, exiled from his family, think he'd never see them again then he goes to prison for a false accusation and it seems like everything truly is all over for him and then not only is he released from prison on this day but actually he goes to the highest of heights he becomes the second most powerful man in all of Egypt which was the height of civilization so basically the second most powerful person in the world and what we learn from this story is that on Rosh Hashanah, we can truly start afresh and that God is recreating the world. He's recreating reality. Things that we think are stuck, are solid, that can't move, actually are very liquid, very fluid. 
we can be stuck in our doom loop thinking things are terrible, but actually we have no idea what could be around the corner. So this is really to say, look at how this year started and now look at how it's ending. Things can change so quickly. And so it's really a message of encouragement, a message of faith and trust and confidence. And that all we have to think about on our end is, as well as just seeing how we're going to rightly expect miracles in the coming days and weeks, that we can too can partner with God in being part of these miracles, which is by instead of rushing away from our Judaism, our Jewish identity and our heritage, we instead reconnect with it and re-articulate it to the world with confidence, with pride and spread our light far, farther and further than ever before. That is what will truly get rid of all the darkness that we're seeing. This is not just a military fight, it's an ideological one at its core. And that's the one that we truly have to have to win. Thank you so much for watching JTV over this past year. We've grown a lot over the past year. And for that, I'm so grateful. The fact that we're able to spread the truth in a far greater degree. And that's down to you for watching it, for liking, commenting, sharing the content. It helps so much. And as I've said in a few other videos, I'm really looking now over the next year to scale JTV so we can spread the truth farther and wider than ever before. And scaling means professionalizing where we have documentary content, supplementary content, um, more presenters like me having shows. And in doing that, we will grow at a faster rate, appeal to an even wider and more diverse audience. We already are, but we could do so much more. And I think it's a really exciting plan. If you'd like to get involved in helping with that, we're planning on doing one fundraising day in order to fund this new team that I'm going to build to do this. If you'd like to partner with us in having a mini page where you just reach out to your contacts and see if they can chip in, that would be incredible. We've already had people sign up saying they're up for doing it. If you'd be interested in partnering with us on that, it's a very small commitment, but it will be extremely powerful. It just means reaching out to your network on the day, the day we choose to, to do this fundraiser. And please click in the Google form link in the video description of this video, and I'll reach out to you soon to talk about next steps. Thank you so much for watching. Please share. Please continue to be proud to be a voice of confidence in your Jewishness. And if you're not Jewish, in your um, support and articulation of the vision of the God of Israel and of Israel itself and the Jewish people. Thank you so much. And we'll see you after Rosh Hashanah. Hi, thank you so much for watching. To watch another one, click here. To stay up to date with all our content, click here to subscribe. And if you're able to, you can help support JTV to grow and grow by clicking join below this video, where you can become a member and get perks, including early access to videos and private live discussions with me. But most of all, you'll be partnering with us on our mission to change the world.